Hello! Since you're back for part 2, I can only assume that you're still trying to grind 1 million pitas. Or you're just a loyal fan. <laughs> Either way, in this segment of Resident Evil 4, I will show you how to get the most you can out of Salazar's castle and reveal some little tips that you may haven't heard of before. Before we begin, make sure you hit the subscribe button and like the video. This helps me out more than you think and it makes YouTube notice me. Anyway, just like in part 1, I will still be playing on Professional. This run will still be entirely glitchless, so you don't have to worry about me cheating. Without further ado, let's hop right into it. So as you may remember, we have just defeated the village chief and used his eye to gain access to the next area. After escaping the port of Ganados and crossing the bridge, there will be a pretty decent amount of free loot to snag at the next checkpoint. Don't be afraid of buying the semi-automatic sniper, as it is very useful and it will help you so much more than the hunting rifle would have, especially in this segment. The riot shotgun is also a worthy gun upgrade. Sell your normal shotgun and make the change. This weapon seems to have a higher critical chance, especially at close range. <laughs> Thank you. Once you leave Adventure of Ashley to the first area, take out your new sniper and shoot the first two pulses you see with a crisp headshot. This will take them down easily and you won't have to worry about them later. After grabbing the rifle and ammo, run up the stairs to trigger a cutscene. These fireballs can be terribly annoying at first, but with the correct timing you can easily pass into a safe zone. Don't forget to grab the spindle from the first destroyed structure you see and quickly run down the next set of stairs you come into contact with. This is where the original cultists were, but in the tower will be a cannon and barrels containing loot. Continue progressing by running up the stairs. You can take out all of the trebuchets easily from these positions. Don't forget to grab the golden bangle. After blowing a hole in the gate with a conveniently placed cannon, ignore the merchant, unless you need him, as you've most likely already sold everything prior. This next room could be tough, unless you bait the horde of cultists down the stairs before spawning the new ones. Why bait them, you may ask? Well, if you rush up the stairs like the game expects you to, the cultists are programmed to surround both you and Ashley. Leaving Ashley downstairs would only cause her to be kidnapped by the new cultists that appear down there. So, take the easier route and save your heals. After switching the swords and collecting everything in the room, both upstairs and down, go into the next area to run into Lewis. Please ignore that both Ashley and Leon have low health here, as during my segment I didn't want to reset to the nearest checkpoint to try again. Leon! Lewis! This next part is easy. If you have enough ammo, you could just headshot all the cultists with your sniper. Unfortunately, I had to use my shotgun on the shield enemies, but the explosive barrel in the key room saved me some ammo. After talking to Salazar, run up the stairs and shoot down the gem on the wall to combine into your mask. Quickly run into the next area and obtain the prison key. Don't forget to look behind the Saddler painting for a quick 5,000 pitas. Send the Garador back to its cell, then turn the lever to gain passage to the toughest room in the game. This room is annoying. There's a lot of loot here, but it's normally difficult even for experienced players like myself. Unfortunately for me, I'm playing on professional, so I have to worry about two archers sniping at me. You can normally use your sniper to kill off the few enemies that appear right as you enter the room, but I didn't have any ammo for it. There's no safe place for Ashley to stay without being killed or kidnapped, and the enemies constantly spawn until you manage to turn the crank to lower the staircase. One thing you can do is kill enemies and then leave the way you entered from. This will save your progress in the Room of Doom, allowing you to repeat until there's no enemies overrunning you. This is by far the most convenient way I could think of. The next part is pretty simple. 
there's a moderately large chance for the game to give you some sniper ammo to cover Ashley while she turns the cranks. After this segment is basically smooth sailing for the most part. Once you make it into the next area, make sure you shoot the spindles out of the statue for some quick cash, and then get through Ashley's unnecessary breakdown. Right after this, Salazar will call you and mock you for losing Ashley. He will tempt you to take on his pets, but instead return to the shopkeeper area and go into the shooting range. Each time you complete an entire set of prizes in your bottle cap collector, which you will be able to find in your treasures after the first shooting Welcome. range, you will get a large sum of money. Every row of bottle caps completed actually increases the reward earned. Completing game A unlocks the entire row of bottle caps, will reward you 15,000 pieces, game B is 25,000, C is 35,000, and D is 50,000. Although it isn't the biggest amount, it is still over 100,000 pitas, which is a tenth of the goal we're trying to reach. I personally choose the sniper set because it gives me a pistol, which is very easy to aim with, but you could use whatever, as long as you finish the ropes. Don't worry about missing a shooting range, there will always be a final range right before the fight with Krauser that allows you to catch up. There's not really much to say about the bug room in this segment, just kill all the bugs, because a majority of the time they would drop a bug eye, which you could sell for different amounts depending on the color. However, make sure you save at least one of every color, blue, red, and green, because you can combine these into the first butterfly lamp, a treasure that sells for a great amount that you could actually find two of. Watch out for the Navistador's insta-kill attack, and make sure you keep an eye out for the random treasure around this area because there is some stuff you could sell for a little bit of pitas. Once you return to the room you were in before, hopefully you have a spare grenade on you, as every enemy that appears drops a spindle, and the red cloaked one drops an Illuminato's pendant for a hefty amount of pitas. They will run away the second they notice you and step fighting as the cultists normally would, so you need a weapon that can not only knock them down, but kill them quickly. Duplex. This next area is pretty self-explanatory. Break pots, kill enemies, and get the key. Here's a tip though. Do everything within your power to headshot the red hooded cultist. Not only does he have the key, but if he runs far enough, he gets access to a Gatling gun. This just makes the room harder. However, don't forget the little side room filled with small chests of pitas. As a cash check, we are nearly at half a million pitas, and that is including weapon upgrades. If I hadn't purchased anything, we would most likely be at our goal by now. However, this seems like a great place to stop. In part 2 of the castle, I will reveal more secrets and ways to get extra cash easily. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn on notifications so you don't miss out on future content. Peace. I know you told your friend you're not okay. And tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way And guess you're trying to stay strong and fake a smile until I look away But I've known you too long, it hurts to watch your blue eyes fade to grey